Spratty Show. Um, I've got Michelle Spratt here from High Wycombe and uh, Michelle has a condition called ataxia so I thought it'd be really good to bring her on to talk about the condition, what it is and how it affects her and um, to maybe give out some support like information about any groups that are out there or anything or what it is that Michelle does to actually deal with it. So, hi Michelle, how hi. are you today? I'm fine, thanks. It's really good to have you here. <laughs> so, um, do you want to tell me a little bit about ataxia, what it is? Well, ataxia in itself just means unsteadiness. So it could be a symptom of like MS or Parkinson's, but um, ataxia in its true form, there's two types of ataxia. Friedrich's ataxia, which usually affects younger children, and it also affects the heart. Um, so several people I know have died of heart attacks and co coordination. Um, what I have is cerebellar ataxia, which <laughs> is really Co affects my coordination, my speech, swallowing, um, they're the main things but also with it, there are a lot of other side effects that can occur like um, curvature of the spine, eyesight can be affected, hearing can be affected but of course it depends from what each person. Okay, so it's different. Now, you um, got this when you were about seven years old, is that yeah. right? Yeah. Did something happened to you? You had an, an accident? Yeah. Yes. Um, what it usually affects people in older life, comes out in later life through the genes, but I had an accident at school. I fell and broke my two front teeth and that we didn't know for years I had to go to the John Rugcliffe for years for tests but that um, affected my speech which in turn affected my coordination and um, it was when I was 12 they found out that it was um, ataxia but put it down to, I'd also had a road accident when I was about three. Um, but when I was 16, the MRI scan had just come out and it was found that it was one of several causes, but it was probably genetic. So it would have come right. out in later life, but my accident triggered it off. Okay, so when you say genetic, has anybody else in your family got, got a taxi? Not that we know. No. no. Okay, okay. So you think that it, it started when you were about three. You had an accident when you were three as well. Oh, um, yeah, that was just, uh, I was run over and I think oh, oh. I was fine after that. I mean, <laughs> I won't say fine. But apart from a few stitches, so I don't think that was anything to do with it. But okay, but then it actually came to forth when you were seven. Yeah. And then when you were 16, you started to have more tests to determine what... Well, no, uh, for, uh, when I was seven, the teachers started noticing my writing was like a spider and I kept falling over. Okay, so, so those were then, the main symptoms. Yeah, Sorry. from then I was sent to see a neurologist and I'd have brain scans and everything but obviously since then with the um, diagnosis getting better and the MRI scan came out. Right, that right. Did that help you once you knew uh, exactly what was going yeah, on? Yeah, uh, yeah, I think so. Mm. Because people just assumed it was my road accident, which 
really annoyed us because we knew it wasn't but we didn't know what it was and I hadn't got a name for it either so I just make up silly names. Right, okay. So it must have been really, really difficult for you to have such a change in your life at that age. I mean, seven is usually the yeah. age where you're starting to become, you know, you're not a, a child anymore. You're starting to become, yeah. you know, a person. Um, so how did it affect you? Well, I think that's also what probably um, made it um, worse. Well, I won't say worse. But because up from starting school up to the age of seven, I was really happy. I was like top of the class. I was really popular. And then everything suddenly changed overnight and I had no idea why. And from a child who was like grammar school material at the top of a gym class, I went straight down. Right. And what about the children in school? How did they react to it? Oh, I did went you get a, a lot of problems bullying, from, yes. Did you really? Yeah. That's awful. You see, this is the problem, you know, uh, what we're trying to do is build awareness. Mm -hmm. of everything because I think it's the lack of awareness that yeah. causes bullying when we know more about each other and you know what's going on with everyone because mm -hmm. everyone's got something where none of us are, are perfect. And what people don't realise is that what goes on at school in those early years can affect you for the rest of your life. Mm. I know I was put in a Facebook group for my primary school, which I found awful. I've had to take myself out of it. But I just right. put, was going around saying crying to everyone, I hated school. And someone said, well, just put on there what mm. it was like and I put on a comment that I went through hell at school which was really hard for me to do at the time mm. being honest but, yeah. and I was expecting comments like that uh, you bitch really stuff like that but um, this guy just said oh sorry kids can be cruel can't you mm. and it was nice of him to acknowledge it, but the thing is, people say that and then just wipe it away like it was years ago, it never happened. Oh, but it does affect you. It does. <laughs> Believe me, when things happen to you as a child, if they, have, if they haven't actually been so solved and the situations you've got to live yeah. with, it does affect you when you get older. I remember definitely. the girl who was supposedly my best friend everyone else left me but the fact she did hurt so much more as i said i've always wanted to scratch her eyes out <laughs> have you met her at all well since <laughs> she actually in homer green she um i was going down to the bus and she came up to talk to me like oh hi and I was just like, go away, I can't handle this. <laughs> so it's like nothing happened. As you say, when, yeah. when we're younger, we see things a lot differently. Yeah. And when we grow up, we, we can become more well, aware and treat well, people with respect. Mum was always respect. saying to me, you know, when I turn on it, it's not her problem. She doesn't know anything. And that's it. People don't. They mm. don't realise what they've done and no. how it affects you, but it, it does. Of course it does. Of course it does. Um, we're just going to take a break here. and When we come back, I'm going to talk to Michelle about all the incredible things that she does in spite of the ataxia. All the um, incredible studying and, and degrees that she's got and everything. So uh, we'll be back in a minute. Welcome to Moving On TV, the new TV channel for us, the positive, inspirational TV channel. My name is Lauren Hope 
I am the founder and CEO of Moving On TV. No one is ordinary. We're all special, unique, wonderful human beings. We're all celebrities with our own talents and strengths and dreams. Moving On TV is here for all of us. We have a book show if you wrote a book. We're looking for talent, for moving on talent. We want to stream you. We don't want you to compete. Artists shouldn't have to compete. It's disrespectful. And we're going to produce a new musical. And you could be in it. And we're going to serialize it for everyone. We're not going to have the news. We're going to have the happy news. Positive, inspirational, happy stories which are actually the majority of the stories in the world that are happening all around us, except no one wants to give them to you. And of course, because we're run by solution-based people, life coaches, we want to give you the truth and to help you move on. So we want to know why these tragedies are happening all around us. Why are so many people being hit off their bicycles? What is the solution to all these problems in our world? How can we have a better world, a more peaceful world? We're looking for you. We're looking for all of you. Everyone has a unique story. We're looking for hosts, presenters, all age groups, particularly older people that are not being given any opportunities. Come and work on our media. Cameramen, editor, editors, anyone who wants to work with us. And of course, sponsors organic makeup and organic products that are helping the environment and the human race. Come on board Moving On TV, the new positive channel, the channel that gives you hope. You can contact me at Lauren with an E at movingontv.uk. Don't get depressed. Come on board Moving On TV. See you soon. Bye. Welcome back. Um, I'm here today on the Disability Show, which is a great show for anyone who's got a disability. You know, last year I, I was in a wheelchair and I didn't even know if I was going to walk again. I think it's really important that, you know, if I hadn't got out of that wheelchair, that I would have some kind of platform to talk about myself and my disability and how I feel about being in a wheelchair. And, and that's why, you know, this show is here. But what I love about you, Michelle, is that in spite of the ataxia, you have gone out there and you've done amazing things. You've managed to get degrees and you've studied really hard. So do you want to tell us a little bit about that? So you didn't give up, you know, you kept going and you did a lot. So can you tell me a little bit about what, you, what degrees you've got? Oh, degrees. I've only got one degree. Well, um, only. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> only. I've got a degree in psychology, mm -hmm. and then I also um, done a teaching English as a foreign language course, and I've taught in a few countries abroad. Right. As well as te working in a few orphanages. What countries did you work in? Um, I've worked in an orphanage in Thailand and in Ghana. I've also taught in a primary school in Ghana, primary school in Honduras, a mobile school in Venezuela, which goes into remote villages, and a um, college in Sri Lanka. Wow! <laughs> and all of this with this condition? Yeah. You managed to do all of this with the tax, yeah? And yeah. What are people sitting there thinking, I, you know, I don't know what to do with my life or I can't do anything. This is what I'm saying is, you know, there is no excuse. Just get out there and do what you can. So did you enjoy yourself? Did you, did you like that, yeah. doing all of that? Did yeah. You, the, the traveling and the teaching? Yeah. And why did you, why did you stop that? Um, money, I think, yeah. and also what put me off travelling on my own is 
when I flew back from Indonesia, they lost my wheelchair. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. How can you lose a wheelchair? Oh, that is so weird. Did you? Did they find it in the end? They did, amazingly, <laughs> but it took about a year. A year? Mm. Oh, for God's sake. That's ridiculous. I've never heard of someone, an airline, losing a, a wheelchair. I've heard oh, of well, you don't know. Things, Oh my goodness! So, um, so you've come, you came back, and um, did did you work with any? Did you work in England when you got back, or what happened? Um, yeah, I be, tried to get jobs, but unfortunately, it's been difficult. Um, so at the moment, I'm selling Avon. Okay. Right, okay. Yeah, we did talk about this, that in spite of your degree, I mean, you have so much to offer, that you were, this is the thing, is you were able to go overseas and teach, but somehow in England, you're not able to get the job that you want to mm. get. Why do you think that is? Because of discrimination. Because of discrimination. Yeah. Isn't that awful? You see, this is, this is not what we want to hear, but we need to put it out there. So you feel that there's more discrimination in this country than there, there was in other countries. Because yes. obviously they took you on yeah. to work. I mean, when you went for an interview, what, how did the interview go? Well, how actually, go? I, because a lot of these places... Oh, what you mean in, in England? England? Yeah, when you came back, yeah. Well, I remember one um, summer school, I... Got very, I'm always worried about my voice, so I had the interview on the phone, got a job to teach on a summer school up in Scotland, and I'd only actually taught one lesson, when um, one of the directors called me in and said, my contract was terminated because my voice wasn't good enough to teach English and I wasn't independent enough, despite the fact I'd flown up there on my own. Yes. So, unfortunately, it's situations like that which really put you off. That's awful. So, um, you see, moving on TV, we're all about solutions and we like to try to think that the, we can find ways to help people to do what, what they want to do with their life. So, what, what can we do? How can we help you? Who, how, what can be done to help you to, to get a job, do you think? I don't know. Open-minded bosses. Yeah. Um... Mm -hmm. what's, what's your dream job, would you say, Michelle? I don't know now. Um, I wanted, when I um, graduated, to really get into psychology, but unfortunately, with academia, the thing is um, th that if you haven't got a high enough grade, and because I didn't get a high enough, as I said, a good enough degree, I wasn't, I, I remember I was shortlisted for a job as a psychology assistant, and because I hadn't got a high enough degree, I wasn't shortlisted, which made me really angry. Cause uh, sorry, you said you were shortlisted, but, yeah. but you actually weren't shortlisted. Well, because I hadn't got a high enough degree, right. I wasn't so um, do, do for the job. Mm. But as some people have said, but look at what you had to get over before you even got. Class. Yeah, but exactly. Of course, they didn't notice all of that. When all your mm. friends get higher degrees, it does make you feel a bit crap. Mm. But I must admit, you know, your life is very, very full. Uh, you do get out there, 
know you you do lots of different things don't you mm, no. so how do you, you I mean it's very difficult because you can't work and you know as we know I, I started this station because I became self-employed mm. to do what I want to do with my life mm. Pat are you okay yeah are you sure because I think you're crying no it was just um, talking it's getting oh. a bit okay um, okay, so we were just saying that um, it's very, very difficult to get a job in this country if you're disabled, in spite of the fact that Michelle has a very, very full life and gets around herself. I'm always seeing you in all these places in the art center, or today you came to the craft thing. You don't sit at home and feel sorry for yourself. You're always getting out there and doing things. It's it, it just such a shame that you can't be offered anything. What, what about voluntary work? Would you be able to do anything like that? I've done loads of voluntary work. Yeah. Voluntary work is good, but people, when assume you don't want to get paid, that's all you do. They take it for granted. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> At some point, you have to say, you're yeah, right, I, I'm getting paid now. Mm. Yeah, exactly. So, um, you also belong to the Ataxia group. And yeah. there are there are groups, Ataxia groups, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. And uh, there's one in Maidenhead. Yeah. Is that the one you usually go to? That's the one I started. Right. Yeah. How do you get there? A uh, taxi now. Right, okay. Yeah. It takes you all the way there. Yeah. What sort of activities do they do? Well, um, luckily we have a really good secretary who more or less runs it. Um, because although I started it in 2002, I got a bit um, worn down by it. And I was almost going to give up before this couple joined whose husband had just got diagnosed with the taxia. And the wife has become secretary. She's really good. So um, I do keep fit in the village and my um, keep fit teacher actually comes over and does a session with us, which we done last time. And then um, because where well, we meet at Sports Able, they have um, activities for people with disabilities, sports activities. It's good if we don't have an activity, we can do something there. Okay. We've also had theatre trips, boat trips, cream teas, Christmas meals. Good. There's lots going on. Yeah. And cool. are there any other any groups in High Wycombe or only in Maidenhead, would you say, or um, around this area? Ataxia groups, I think, Maidenhead. I mean, when I started it, I wanted to start it in Bucks, but the thing is, with rare disabilities, people are so widespread, I didn't know anyone in Bucks with it, so now we have members from Bucks, Berkshire, Oxfordshire, and Maidenhead is a more central place for us all. Okay, that's really good. So, if someone wants to go to one of these groups, if they have a taxi out or their family or friends, how do they get in touch with them? Is, do you want to tell, what? say to the camera? Well, actually? the um, main taxi site is www.ataxia.org.uk. Um, then there'll be a link on the um, website to local groups and if you just look up Thames Valley Ataxia Group that will give you the contact details. Thank you Michelle. So if someone had just got diagnosed now with Ataxia what would you be able to say to them in order to help them a little bit with all the experience you've got um, 
Is there anything you could say to them that might make their journey a little bit easier? Sounds cliche, but life's tough, but it gets better. Okay. <laughs> I love your energy. I think you've got the most beautiful energy. You're so bubbly and full of fun. And, you know, I'd, and anyone should give you a job. You know, you've just got so much great energy in you. Um, I mean, the other thing as well, you know, as I was asking you about if someone gets diagnosed, what about the actual, how does the condition get treated? Um, do, you use, do you have medication? Do you have physio? Do, um, do you use any alternative methods at all to help yourself? Well, because I was at school, um, still a child when I was diagnosed I had to have physio um, and they recommend that you people with ataxia see a neurologist um, there are also medications you can do, take like vitamin B6 to deal with tiredness. Um, I think that there's research going on it, it all the while and if you get in touch with the uh, main ataxia group and you can get involved with research projects. Okay. Um, I now, I do aqua therapy and um, I do keep fit once a week, so. That's great, and do you find that helps you? Yeah. So it keeps your muscles working yeah. and, and everything? Yeah. Okay, Michelle, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for coming on. And yet again, if there's anything at all that you think moving on TV can do. I mean, if we brought someone on um, like from a job agency or an empl and, and actually put them on the spot do you think you you know do you think we could maybe get you some help there to help you get a job I don't know <laughs> we'll have to think about it because mm. like I say um, I, I like to think that there's solutions to practically everything mm. in life maybe not everything um, but there are solutions to a lot of things in mm. life and I set this up in order to be able to help people as much as possible mm. to, to have happier and better lives. Mm. So um, as I say we'll talk about it and we'll mm. see what comes up. So you've been watching the disability show, uh, this is the first episode um, with Michelle Spratt from High Wickham who's been talking about ataxia. Now, if you want to come on to the show, anyone who has a disability, this is your show, this is your platform to talk about what matters to you and to look for solutions, to try and bounce off each other, to find solutions to things that if they may not be working the way you want them to work. So thank you so much, Michelle. It's been a pleasure and um, have, have a beautiful day and if you want to get in touch with me to find out more or to come onto the show it's lauren l-a-u-r-e-n-e at movingontv.uk you can find us on twitter at moving on tv facebook moving on tv and of course youtube you need to subscribe to the channel click the little bell it's moving on tv community and that's it and if you want to donate something, please feel free to contact me. And of course, we need sponsors. You know, it goes without saying. So, take care. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. And namaste from Micklefield. Bye.